The Learning Bar welcomes you to our next installment of our Raising the Bar series. This series sets the stage for school leaders to share their stories on how they are using their data to drive measurable change at the school level. Our guest speaker is Marnie Wilson, who is the Research, Assessment, and Evaluation Specialist at Brandon School Division, located in Brandon, Manitoba. In this video, Marnie will be sharing how our school survey data is used to inform Brandon School Division's improvement planning goals. My name is Marnie Wilson, and I am the Research Assessment and Evaluation Specialist with Brandon School Division here in Brandon, Manitoba. We are a division of 22 schools and are approaching 8,500 students. A part of my role in the division is to gather, analyze, and report on student data to help inform our division's decisions. I also support school administrators as they apply data to their school improvement planning. I've been in this role since the fall of 2012. Now the intent of this webinar is to share with you how Brandon School Division has evolved in its use of Tell Them From Me data in our strategic planning process since I started as district coordinator four years ago. More specifically, I will share how we used Tell Them From Me data to decide our last strategic plan focus areas and write our goals and how we have continued to use the data to track our progress. Everything I share with you is pretty grassroots, just an overview of how we tackled the process. I admit up front that my background is not in strategic planning. Rather, I have a background in research and in program evaluation. So the approach we took over the last four years was influenced by that background. Our approach was also influenced by a desire to not only set appropriate goals, but also to hone our ability to monitor our progress towards those goals. I will explain our ever-evolving process and how it's impacting school development planning as well. Now in program evaluation, we create logic models. And when creating logic models, we often begin by asking what is the ultimate as opposed to immediate outcome of a given program. And in education, we also know it is best to start with the end in mind. So before we began the strategic planning process, we thought about what we wanted in the end for our students. This is seemingly a simple question, but it led to a wider conversation than we thought. We discussed this in the ultimate sense, very broadly. Obviously, we want our students to be academically prepared, but we also discussed the need to prepare them for the 21st century with broader skill sets. We also realized that it was important for our students to be happy and healthy. We also discussed how all of these outcomes are interrelated. Our answers led to these three broad areas. Ultimately, we want students to be healthy, academically prepared global citizens. We then asked, what do we already know about our students? This was a very exploratory process to start with. Now we are fortunate in our division to have a senior administrative team who value data informed decision making enough to have allocated a full-time position to this kind of work within our division. So we started with a broad and very general look at the data we already collect on our students. We looked at the available provincial data, so that was literacy, numeracy, and engagement data. We looked at divisional data in literacy and numeracy and much kindergarten data. We looked at early development instrument data, youth health survey data, and of course, Tell Them For Me data. Brandon School Division has been administering the Tell Them For Me survey over the last several years. We had started with a few interested schools until we mandated division-wide implementation three years ago. So we have quite a bit of data in the area of engagement, bullying, emotional health, etc. Once we felt we had a general picture of things, we then drilled down into that data a bit more, looking for patterns, anomalies, and group-specific trends. Now, I'm not sure if it was a good idea to get more specific at this point in the process, but I can tell you that this drilling down process highlighted the areas of concern for us. For example, consider this broad view of anxiety and depression results we received from completing the Tell Them For Me survey in the 2011-12 school year. Although having 18-19% to 19 of our students experiencing anxiety and depression seemed high to me, we were at par with Canadian norms. Now, I don't mean to diminish the severity of these numbers, only to state that this broad view may not have convinced us to include emotional health in our strategic plan. However, when we looked at some of the more specific data available to us, we became convinced. 
we saw quite a difference in the prevalence of anxiety and depression when we compared those students who had self-declared as Aboriginal on the survey with those who had not. When we compared the results for boys and girls, we saw an even greater disparity. And this comparison caught our attention too. What this meant to us was that Aboriginal students were more likely than non-Aboriginal students to experience anxiety and depression. Girls were more likely than boys to experience these negative factors. And Aboriginal girls were most likely to experience them. Looking at the data with this level of specificity starts to point toward potential strategic actions and target groups, which wasn't the intention at this point. But it certainly made us realize the importance of including emotional health as an area of focus in our strategic plan. All of this exploration led to this more fleshed out version of our focus areas. So we called the three broad areas you saw earlier our ultimate outcomes. We turned these ultimate outcomes into broad objectives. So our divisional objectives became academic growth and achievement, 21st century skill development, and health promotion. We then identified specific focus areas within each broad domain. So our focus areas in academic preparedness, for example, are literacy and numeracy. And jumping down to the orange area here, um, our specific areas of focus in health and well-being are emotional health and physical health. Now, the benefit of starting with ultimate outcomes is that it creates a shared vision of what we want for the students, and one that is not likely to change from one strategic plan cycle to another. So while our focus areas may change in the shorter term, we didn't see the ultimate outcomes changing in the foreseeable future, and we liked the overall continuity that that could create. We undertook the process of strategic planning with this basic tenant in mind. Strategic planning and school development planning are simply about improvement. And as educators, we know that improvement necessitates progress monitoring. So we decided on a very structured, overt, and transparent approach to progress monitoring. We stated the initial benchmarks, so we knew our starting point. We wrote our 2017 targets. But we then overtly stated interim benchmarks, reminding us that we must check in at various points throughout the time frame. Each interim benchmark is a progress point, identifying, hopefully, intervals of progressive success points. We laid out the benchmark and goal portion of our strategic plan in a table this way, with the focus areas listed down the left side. Across the top, you'll note the target, the ultimate target in 2017 our intended measures, the initial benchmark, or the June 2014 results, and the interim benchmarks, as well as an overtly stated plan for collecting the data. Now we could have organized this more chronologically so that the target column was on the right side, but I suppose we thought that having it stated first reflected the approach of starting with the end in mind. Now to this point, I have illustrated our process using the example of Tell Them From Me anxiety and depression measures as the indicators we would use regarding the emotional health of our students. In the case of emotional health, the Tell Them For Me measures were a perfect fit. However, the picture isn't always as clear as that. I have learned that this process is a balance between what is ideal and what is realistic. I'll use one of our other focus areas to explain. Ideally, we would have had a specific measure of the 21st century skills we were hoping to tap into here. We began researching a variety of 21st century skill measures. But knowing that we could only bite off so much as a division at one time, and being leery as we are of overwhelming teachers with data collection, we decided to focus on the data we were already collecting that was the best fit indicators of what we were trying to capture in this focus area. So we fleshed out what we meant by personal growth, and we came up with these specific components. At the same time, we also asked ourselves, what measures are we already using that would give us indications of those skills? So for example, we considered graduation and attendance rates. Also, our provincial report card includes three learning behaviors. 
These learning behaviors are personal management skills, active participation in learning, and social responsibility. All behaviors we felt were indicative of personal skills and engagement. But we also looked at the array of tell them from me measures, those measures which reflected the competencies of interest. So again, we were after a best fit set of data. Once we figured out our tell them from me best fit measures to use as indicators of this focus area, we listed our initial benchmarks, and they're seen here. We then wrote our SMART goal. Now you've likely heard or seen this acronym before, but this extra S is intentional. I added the first S because I was finding a tendency to write goals that were teacher or system centered. In other words, there was a tendency to write goals describing what would be done rather than the outcomes we wanted to see. It seems kind of human nature to jump to the strategic actions before being clear about the outcomes we intend these actions to have for students. So this extra S in SMART reminds us that the goals should be written about the student outcomes. The R means, of course, that we write a goal that has our initial benchmark or starting point in mind. So one SMART goal in the personal growth focus area is, by 2017, there will be an increase in academic engagement such that 90% of grades 7 to 12 students will report a positive sense of belonging, valuing school outcomes, having positive relationships, and report planning to finish high school. And the percentage of students reporting high levels of interest and motivation will double. And this is how we started tracking and visually displaying our progress. The green lines are the initial, initial benchmark data. So based on the data we had readily available at the time of writing the strategic plan, the red lines are our targets. So the darkest red line is the 2017 target, and the other red lines represent our interim benchmarks at 2015 and 2016. So in 2015, we were looking to see, first of all, have we improved? Are we higher than the green line? And secondly, did we reach the June 2015 interim benchmark line, the first red line? So here are our results. The blue bars represent the results from our first progress monitoring check after the first year of our strategic plan. We saw increases in each of these areas in the one year. Of particular note is increasing from 65% to 73% of students who report feeling a sense of belonging, and from 45% to 58% who report being interested and motivated in their learning. But we then compare it to the lightest red line, which represents the 2015 interim goal. We surpassed our lofty year one benchmark targets in two of the five areas, and we came very close in two other areas. So what I hope I've addressed in this webinar is how we have used Tell Them For Me data to decide our divisional focus areas, how that data was instrumental in writing our goals or targets, and how we continue to use data to track our progress. I realize that what I have not covered is the process of identifying, planning, and implementing the actions intended to bring about that improvement. I feel that is probably a topic for a whole other webinar. My hope is that by sharing the, the process we've taken over the last four years, you may either have a new idea to try or you may feel validated in the process you're already undertaking. Finally, I wish to thank the Learning Bar for providing me with the opportunity to share a small part of our past Tell Them For Me data journey.